once more onto the seas, dear friends. Combining the themes of my previous two videos. I decided to have a look at Sid Meier's Pirates! Exclamation mark. So due to the fact that it's an old game, the highest resolution is 1280 by 720 So, if you want to play at higher resolutions, you'll need to follow this guide by Dr. Skid. Link in the description. You can either choose a slightly lower resolution, or you can select 1080 with the odd side effect of making your mouse unusable. For the sake of recording purposes, and to give all you lovelies the best quality footage, I went for the 1080 fix. I just had to learn to play the whole game using only keyboard. Just make sure you don't alt tab out of the game or you lose all your progress from your last save. Really I can just describe Sid Meier's PIRATES as Mountain Blade at sea. Many of the mechanics and systems will be familiar to seasoned Mountain Blade veterans the real-time open world, the warring nations, the romance options, and the weird way every noble, or in this case governor, is willing to meet with some nobody. Oh, and let's not forget, the absolute crushing feeling when you lose a battle, are arrested, and basically lose everything you've worked so hard for. Alright, maybe not everything. You keep your special items and your money, but your ship and all its upgrades are lost. Nation relations will change over time, and war is declared regularly. For some reason, everyone hated Spain at this point. Let's have a more in-depth look at the gameplay. You start as many of our RPGs do, by naming your character. He is the least interesting man in the world. And choose your experience, basically the game difficulty, your primary skill, and the start date, which determines the layout and ownership of the settlements. You then choose which nation to start with, either the French, Spanish, Dutch, people dressed up as Black Pete, or the English. This only really affects which town you start next to on the map, so don't worry about it too much. In towns, you can visit the governor for missions, promotions, and to romance his daughter. The merchant to trade your goods, the shipwright to upgrade, repair, and sell your ships, and the tavern. In the tavern, you can recruit new crew members, acquire special items from the stranger, and get information from the staff. Sometimes you'll find someone harassing the barmaid, and you can challenge him to a... This brings me to the combat. Most actions in the game are controlled using the numpad. Odd, I know, but these were the rough, unstandardized times of, uh, 2004. Your opponent will telegraph attacks and you need to counter in the correct direction, and then choose a direction to attack yourself. Not attack yourself, do an attack yourself, oh, never mind. It's quite simple really. This also applies to the combat on ships or with bosses, but with an extra layer. If one side runs out of crew, they will surrender. So if you start a fight with fewer crew members, think of it as a time limit until you lose. You can also get special items to help in combat, like the pistol, but these don't change the core gameplay. If you lose at any point, you can be arrested or marooned on a desert island, and you lose several months and your ship in the process. Funny enough, romance has similar mechanics to dueling. To romance a governor's daughter, you have to succeed in a dancing minigame. This requires you to follow the hand signals given by your partner and press the corresponding numpad key. It's basically a Simon Says minigame. If you succeed, you're rewarded with information or a special item. If you're wanted by the town's owners, but you really want to talk to the governor or see his daughter, you can try sneaking into town. For this, you need to play through a stealth minigame, avoiding the guards and reaching the governor's manor. It's a cool idea, but it's a lot of hassle for a small payoff. Other things you can do on foot include landing on islands to search for buried treasure or lost relatives. For these, you have to find pieces of maps, either by purchasing them from strangers or stealing them from villains. Landmarks guide you to the X, and you can use your spyglass to look for your goal. You can raid towns as another method of buccaneering, looting the town after a fight with soldiers. On a slightly more peaceful note, you can talk and trade with the Jesuit missionaries who will ask you to escort settlers to nearby towns. You can also talk to native chiefs who will ask you which colony they should raid. Oh. Yeah, actually, that's not really more on the peaceful side, is it? Well, it, it hand off, hands off pirating. There we go. 
Once you're happy with your loot, you can return to port and divide the plunder amongst your crew. The gold is split between them and you lose every ship but your flagship. You better do this regularly, otherwise the crew will desert you or mutiny if you go too long without dividing the spoils. Your notoriety will rise and you can see how you compare to other famous pirates on the leaderboard. Now, let's take a look at the actual pirating side of things. Like everything else, the ships are controlled using the numpad. You sail about the Spanish main in real time, with a day passing every few seconds. Wind strength and direction affect your speed, and you can find yourself either flying along or stuck immobile in a headwind. Because this is the Caribbean, winds mostly blow westward, so you better hope you won't have to make a long easterly journey, or that can take you literal months. You control a fleet of ships, each of which you can name and designate as your flagship. Cargo is shared across your fleet, so it's a good idea to have a flagship geared for combat and a cargo ship or two making up the rest of the fleet. Yes, combat is only with your flagship, so even if you have a group of six ships you've lovingly named the Sloop Squad, you still won't be able to use pack tactics. Battles take place at the location on the map, and you can rush to the aid of ships already in the heat of battle. In combat, you use the numpad to select the type of ammo you wish to use and which side of the ship to fire with. Don't bother swinging your ship around to get off a quick volley with the other side, as cannons are shared across your ship. You can use chain shot to slow them down, grape shot to thin out their crew, or good old fashioned round shot to wreck their ship and rid them of their guns. Keep an eye on the wind though, as you don't want to find yourself trapped motionless and struggling against the breeze. You can ram into enemy ships to board them, playing out the dueling minigame. Ships will sometimes surrender immediately when you approach. The cowards! Defeating ships allows you to plunder their cargo, hire some deserters, and add the ship to your fleet. You can even get specialist crew, like the cook or carpenter from captured vessels. Returning to port, you can repair your vessels, sell any unwanted ships, and upgrade your flagship. If you keep attacking a certain nation, a bounty will be put in your head, and you will be shot at by ports and harassed by pirate hunters. So keep your targets varied, and don't worry about damaging your reputation with factions. These recover over time, and the governors seem to act on some weird logic where they ignore your crimes against their country and promote you for your crimes against other countries. So you can be an English admiral, raid a fleet's worth of English ships, and as long as you sack a French sloop along the way, the governor will let you off with a warning, or maybe even promote you. Weird. As you might have noticed, the cartoony style of the graphics has helped keep the aging down to a minimum. There are plenty of games from 2004 that look far worse than this now. The models and the terrain are solid, and the small details are great. Your character, despite being generic looking white dude with brown hair number 16, has a nice variation in his clothing. When pirating, he wears the white shirt and any special clothing items you've picked up. In port, he wears a uniform with the colour of the uniform dependent on the faction who owns the port. As you're promoted, your uniform will change so you can show off your rank. Ships can be customised with a flag and sail emblem. You can even add your own, which I've done here with the Sea of Thieves skull. You can find a guide on how to make your own custom sails and flags in the description. Ships can be damaged in combat, with the model changing to reflect that. Seals can be ripped to shreds, masts knocked down, crews thinned out, and fires erupting on the deck. When ships are hit you can see cargo or crew flying into the water at times. A surrendering ship will raise a white flag, so keep an eye on that so you don't go committing any war crimes. Not that the Geneva Convention existed back then. Oh, and uh, yeah, wait, you're a pirate, so you've probably committed far worse war crimes. Uh, never mind. Overall, the visuals hold up really well considering the age of the game. They're fun, engaging, and the models are easily readable. Honestly, the music in this game is nothing to write home about. It's very reminiscent of the time it was released, and it has a very kid-friendly style to it. Sailing is musicless, but you will hear your crew singing sea shanties after a successful bout of pirating. As you approach the towns, music will start playing. The song it plays is dependent on who owns the town, 
like the British Grenadiers harpsichord tune for England. The song will also sound different based on the prosperity of the town, with worse off towns sounding less upbeat. The sound effects are varied and do a good job at bringing across information. And if you've played Civilization Revolution, you'll recognise the familiar sound of Sid Meier's classic gibberish when the characters speak. In past. Or in past. Emotion and information is expressed through grunts and grumbles, not unlike a teenager at a family gathering. There isn't really a lot of story here, more like different quests. I'm going to avoid spoilers here mainly because there isn't really anything to spoil. The story is told in the form of text narrated cutscenes. At the start of the game, your family are indebted to the Marquis. He kidnaps every family member, but the young protagonist escapes. Years later, the protagonist joins up with a ship and sets sail for the Spanish main. On the voyage, the crew mutinies against a harsh captain, and the protagonist takes command. And that's it. You're just dropped into the world and have to make your own way. The main quest is to find your lost family members and defeat the Marquis by collecting information and taking out many bosses. But really, the game is more of a sandbox and you can set your own goal. Maybe your goal is to become a pirate hunter and defeat every major pirate. Or maybe you wish to become the best pirate on the seas. Perhaps you hope to become a privateer for one of the powers, reaching the highest rank with them. There is a time limit on your career, as your character ages as time passes so you can play multiple games with different end goals. It is up to you how to play and what you want to achieve, and there is plenty to do to keep you busy. So this is another nearly two decade old game that I'm only playing for the first time now, and honestly I had a lot of fun with it. Any fans of Mountain Blade's overworld mechanics will get a good kick out of it, and if you like games with a pirate theme, this is a pretty good candidate. It currently goes for $7.19 on GOG and $5.99 on Steam, so I'd say it's worth the price for a good few hours of entertainment. Normally I like to end on an upbeat or wholesome note, but I don't really have that kind of feeling toward this game. It's just a decent game, and worth checking out if you're into that kind of thing. I'm going to turn away from pirate games for the next one, just so I don't get bogged down in the genre for too long. Check out Absurdus Film's newest episode of Motherbird, I'm in that one rather heavily, and they put it all together brilliantly. Thank you for watching, please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content, and I'll see you in the next one.